Yes, hello. Uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Um, is the, thanks for joining us. Just want to see if the, if the sound is, is okay with you guys. Great. The sound is good. All right, great. And you can see the um, and you can see the page. There's only one cover page. You can see the page. Very good. Excellent. All right. It's uh, 3.03 p.m. London time, 10.03 p.m. Singapore time. And uh, yeah, so let's get ready here. All right. Very good. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. This is Ashraf Lighty, and I'm uh, happy to do my uh, first webinar here for Tickmill. And um, we're going to focus um, on the Fed, but we're also going to talk about uh, the ECB decision, which is important. I've um, been writing all week that this is going to be a big week. Um, um, I don't think the uh, Kim Trump uh, meeting is going to produce anything worthy for the financial markets. I personally think that there's going to be at least uh, three or four meetings, uh, additional meetings for anything concrete to go into. A lot of things going on in the market, so I'm not going to spend time talking about this meeting. Um, uh, but really, the, uh, the Federal Reserve decision is very important, so let's get right to it here. And if you have any question regarding what I'm saying right now, please just feel free to, uh, to ask it. And uh, I will make sure I'll take a look at all the questions. I have all the questions here and all the comments, and I'll make sure that I'll ask all, and I'll uh, uh, answer all of them. Okay. So we're going to go through the key points on the Fed, the key points on the ECB. Um, my suggested uh, trades for the euro or euro pairs for dollar trades. And suggested the uh, ideas for gold indices and yields. Okay, so basically, what do we expect from the Fed? Well, we expect this is going to be the second uh, interest rate hike of the year. Uh, the first one was in March, and this one is widely expected to see a rate hike. But this is um, widely expected to happen. But when the decision comes out at um, when the decision comes out at um, 7 p.m. Wednesday, 7 p.m. London time. That is, um, <coughs> excuse me, that is uh, 2 a.m. Singapore time. When the decision come out, the first thing that the market is going to react to is not necessarily whether they're going to raise rates. Uh, that is expected to happen, but it's this. So I want everybody to understand what I'm talking about here. So this is a dot plot forecast. So every quarter, uh, um, so basically, March, um, June, September, and December, the, there are, there is a, there is a press conference, and then there is the um, the dot plot, which is basically the forecast by each single member of the Federal Reserve. Each single member will uh, issue their forecast on uh, GDP growth, on uh, Fed funds um, interest rate. Um, where is it going to be? at the end of this quarter, the next quarter, the next quarter, the next, uh, and the following quarter, and also their forecast for inflation. What really matters, what really control the um, forecast or the, or the move and what has been, what has been controlling the reaction to the market in the last four or uh, in the last three or four uh, quarterly Federal Reserve decisions, meaning those that have a dot plot, meaning those that have a forecast, okay? Uh, meaning in um, in March, in in December, in September, and in June. What has been happening was the the predict was the median, not the average, the median, the median forecast for the Fed funds rate, meaning. They take their forecast, so they take, uh, you know, Williams, they take uh, Powell, they take, uh, you know, uh, they take three or four or five other members, they take their forecast, they put an average, they get the median, and they say, what is expected to be by the end of the year? 
And when they find out what is expected by the end of the year, you can interpolate how you will compare that to June, to, 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 to tomorrow's rate hike, and you can guess, so you can interpolate how many more rate hikes. So they have done already one, they're expected to do two, and the plot for the Fed funds is expected to see the number of Fed hikes this year is expected. Will it, will it show that there's gonna be four rate hikes this year, meaning two more after, not today, but after tomorrow, after June, or will it be uh, one, more, one more rate hike, meaning three rate hike for the year? Now, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying, um, is that in, um, in the last meeting in March, and even in December, uh, in March meeting, there was expectations that they were going to raise, that they were going to raise their forecast to expect four rate hikes by the end of the year from three. Okay, so in December, according to the dot plot, they expected three for this year. And that's why the market, that's why the US dollar fell almost immediately after the December decision of the Federal Reserve. In March, when the market started to improve and the GDP and, and, and the US data started to improve and so on and so forth, the markets were almost sure that the forecasts are going to be shifted to suggest there's going to be four rate hikes in 2018. But guess what? They did not do that. They expected there were going to be between three and 3.2, 3.3, because it's a number, right? It's interpolated, so it's going to be slightly three. Okay? And so here is the key now. Is it because the data has been improving in the US and GDP growth has been sort of improving and consumption and, 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 and ISM and the jobs, job figures have been improving, there's a very good chance, there's a very good chance that the dot plot is, is going to show four rate hikes. So if they do, if it's going to show 3.7 or 3.8 or 3.9, if they do, the market, the US dollar is going to rally, is going to rally. The question how long and how high is going to rally and that is going to depend on the next point okay on the next point which i'm going to show um but before i go to the next point it also depends how much how, how many more because like i said this is according this is taken as as an average so if it's going to be closer to three if it's going to be 3.4 3.5 uh, and this is what the headline numbers are going to show. This is what the releases are going to show. The first thing is going to say, they're going to say Fed raises interest rates. And I'll be tweeting it. Uh, I'll be tweeting this. And I'll be trading, but I'll be tweeting it. And this is the first thing that I'll say. I'll say Fed hikes, uh, Fed hikes, which is not a news, not any news. But the main thing that I'll be saying, I'll be tweeting, uh, which, is, uh, which is basically saying, how many how many more rate hikes for the year okay and and then the third point and this is i want you to pay attention to this is the jay powell who is the new uh, governor of the of uh, the new chairman of the federal reserve his press conference which is going to come out 30 minutes after the announcement so like i said the announcement is at 7 p m london time or 2 p m us or canada 7 p m Wednesday, London time, or 4 a.m. Um, Singapore, or uh, 10 p.m. Saudi Arabia, uh, sorry, uh, 9 p.m. Saudi Arabia, or 10 p.m. Dubai. And the Powell's press conference is half hour after that, so it's 7.30 p.m. London time. And his conference, he's going to speak and he's going to have to ask, uh, answer every single question that he gets. And they're very good questions, very deep questions from reporters who specialize in covering the Fed. Uh, here's what I'm watching. And this has been important. This has been the new thing since, uh, since March, which is watch what he says on the symmetric approach to inflation. And I'm going to talk about this in a bit. And I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to explain what this means. So we're going to have... So in the last uh, press conference, in, in the last announcements, even when there is no press conference, the Federal Reserve said that they're going to have a symmetric approach to inflation. Symmetric meaning the left side or the 
the right side or the upside or the downside is similar. What am I talking about? I'll explain to that. But before I explain to that, I am also watching the reaction to high yielding currencies and specifically the Australian dollar, which I have been bullish on. And we bought it at 75.30, right now it's at 76. Uh, and it didn't do anything after reaching 76.40 or 30. Uh, but if he's going to mention the symmetric approach, which I'm going to talk about in a bit, um, then the currencies with higher yielding interest rates, with higher yields, like New Zealand dollar or the Australian, specifically the Australian, they go like they're going to improve. And probably the Canadian and the commodities are going to improve. And here is why. This is maybe a golden a golden opportunity. So it, it could be a great opportunity for gold bulls. And I know that many of you are, are bullish gold and I am bullish gold, but it has been doing nothing. And when something does nothing, it does not mean that it is bearish. It does not mean that it is a bad idea. Nobody knows about the timing. So here is this, the symmetric idea is that the Fed's recent reference to symmetric objective means that it anticipates inflation to reach the 2% target and it is willing, it is willing to allow inflation to go above 2, so 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, even 2.5, just as it has been willing to allow inflation last year and the year before to go below the 2% target to as low as 1.4. What happened? The Federal Reserve was raising interest rates when inflation was below target. So they were willing to do that. And what is the symmetric approach? A symmetric approach meaning that just as they were willing to have some sort of gap below the target, they're willing to have some sort of a gap above the target. What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? Ask yourself this question. What does that mean? Does that mean that if the Fed is willing to see inflation slightly overshoot, are they going to be in a rush to put to uh, to press uh, the brake? Are they going to be uh, on, in a rush to uh, raise interest rates? No, they're going to have an approach. They're going to have a a a a um, a, a gradual approach. So said in a different way, just as the Fed did not interrupt its campaign of gradual tightening or tightening or raising interest rates when inflation went below target last year and the year before, it may not necessarily accelerate the frequency of rate hikes this year when inflation reaches 2.2, 2.3. Now today, we had inflation numbers from the US and the dollar did not do much, okay? Today we had the CPI and it came out at, it was expected to go from 2.1 to 2.2 two, two, and it went to 2.2. Two, two. But the Fed does not, in the inflation target, it does not use CPI, it uses core PCE price index. And core PCE price index is still below 2%, okay? so. Is still below 2%. And this is the target that the Federal Reserve uses. Now, is, is everything good so far? Everything is clear or no? All right. Um, so now, so basically the summary of this is that the Fed could be doing three rate hikes, could be doing four rate hikes, but it is not going to be in a hurry. And there is another reason which has nothing to do with inflation, why it is not going to be in a hurry. And it's very important for you to pay attention. As the Fed sells more treasuries, if you know that the QE, the Federal Reserve was buying bonds, was buying bonds, and then it's, and then it's, it stopped buying them, and then it started to taper, meaning it started buying less and less, and then now it is in the process of selling them. When you sell treasury bonds, you redu uh, in order to reduce the balance sheet, okay, then um, the U.S. government and also the U.S. Uh, government is borrowing, is issuing debt, is, is borrowing money to finance its expanding deficit. So as the Federal Reserve, the central bank of the country, is selling bonds, you sell bonds, bond prices go down, yields go up. I'll tell you why yields go up. Uh, what it means in a minute. And when you also, you issue bonds, you increase the supply of bonds, you reduce the price and you increase the yield. What does that mean? You increase the yield, this means you're increasing the interest rate on the credit card of the US government. 
the Fed cannot afford to maintain the same rate of pace, the same pace of interest rate hikes at a time when yields are pushing higher. Otherwise, it will be a problem for the bond market because it's going to send bond yields higher. Holding back on price tightening, Fed hikes, uh, will also be consistent with the Fed's symmetrical assessment, which is what we talked about before. So as the Fed takes it easy in raising interest rates, um, it will also, and it will take it easy, inflation may go to 2.1, 2.2, and they will not be in a hurry to raise rates. But what does that mean for gold? This is exactly what gold bulls, what people who support gold, who buy gold, will want. And guys who are short the dollar would, are waiting for any moment, any moment that a central bank of any country is going to say, um, yes, there is rising inflation, but we're not in a hurry to press the, uh, to hit the brakes. That is good for gold. Why? Because gold rallies when there is inflation. When there is what does inflation? Inflation meaning too much money chasing too few good. The value of money goes down, okay? And uh, basically, money goes into gold. And uh, when interest rates are not pushing higher enough to contain the quantity of money, then the competition of interest rate or of that is gold, and gold goes up. Now, I am not talking that. I'm not talking... And I'm not saying that 2.2, 2.3 is a huge inflation, is a big inflation. No, but it's a reflex. It's a binary thing. Inflation goes down, not really good for gold. Inflation pushes higher, it is better or it is less bad for gold than it was in the last few months. Okay, this is how you have to approach this. And that's why in the last three meetings or four meetings, the Federal Reserve decision uh, led to a rally in gold or supporting gold. Now, um, before I go into the ECB, I'm just gonna talk about some, um, some charts here. So, and this is, let's uh, talk about dollar yen. Dolly yen, this is important. I'm gonna talk about the ECB in a bit. Now, this is a trade that has led to a lot of um, questions and um, So this has been, we basically shorted dolly yen, and so where we are now, there is, this is the 200 day moving average, this is the daily chart, and before I go into the chart, here's basically what I see. The previous chart showed an inverted head and shoulder, okay? You had a, a left shoulder, matching this left shoulder, a head, a right shoulder, and then you have a neckline. And the neckline, even though neckline really start from between the shoulders, this was extending. So you had a, you had a high here. So basically the difference between the distance between 104.50 and 107.20, so we're talking about 330 points, 330 points plus 107.20, you're talking about 110.60, around 111, and the target was reached. Okay, so the market did reach this uh, inverted head and shoulder target. If you believe in head and shoulders, I do, when they are up applied correctly. The market goes up, goes down, and what I believe is that there is a there is a there is a there is a, not an inverted but a, a head and shoulder or a bearish head and shoulder, left shoulder, head, neckline. Always pay attention to the closing values, not the lows and the high. This, the closing value, the closing value, the closing value, the closing value, it's around 109. And this is the right shoulder. What do you say? I'll leave it up to you. You tell me. Is, is, the, is the right shoulder, is the left shoulder broken? Now, this is a bearish uh, formation. And... Shoulders do not have to be the same size. They do not have to be the same shape. They do not have to be the same level. <coughs> and basically, here's the question. The fact that the 200-day moving average is coinciding with the, with the right shoulder is also something. And what is the theoretical 
goal or target. <clears throat> if you have a high around 111.44, and let's say the neckline, or let's say the bottom here, or the neckline is around 108.60, 108.60, 111.30, so we're talking about some 300 points, 300 points minus 108.60, we're talking about just around 105.50 here. Um, and today, the numbers came out, and we had uh, we had a jump earlier, uh, 11047, but the market does not want to go up. But what if, what if, what if there's a knee jerk reaction? What if the market pushes higher tomorrow ahead of the Fed, a knee jerk reaction when they raise rates? Well, you'd have to see, is it going to close above that, above this level or not? That's, that's one thing. And let's change the horizon now. Let's change the horizon. Go to weekly. Yeah, Faisal, uh, still not confirmed until I break the neckline. Okay, I'll get back to the daily chart in a bit. This is the weekly chart. There's nothing major here that, that tells me anything. You can put a trend line here and so on and so forth. You can, yeah, you can put a trend line here and it tells you, again, 111.07. What about the monthly chart? So the monthly chart here, Basically, the market is still respecting it. So the problem with being fixated with only one level or one analysis, let's say 120, 130, 140, is that we may even break above it, but we may not carry forward. So while I am focusing too much on this, 110, 66, 80, the market really showing the key resistance, 111, 26. And you have to remember here is that um, you know, there is a lot of algos. This market is over $5 trillion a day. And there's a lot of algos that are uh, basically, um, um, you know, they, they, there's a lot of volatility in the market. So you may see a lot of false closes and so on. And Anton, uh, are you telling me that it's going to go towards 123? Okay, so Anton tells us he thinks that Dalian is going to go towards 123. Okay, so 123, which is basically around here. There's a possibility uh, that it might go there. Um, there is a good chance, yes, there is a chance if, if we do break, if we do break above 111.80, 111.20, uh, we could probably go towards 118.50, 118.60, okay? Um, there is one positive thing for dollar yen, meaning that it could be pushing higher, which is basically the stochastics here are really improving for dollar yen. They are improving. Now, um, there is, I am actually a little bit more bearish in dollar yen, uh, but there is another pair which I am bullish against the yen. And this pair is the following. This pair here is Euro yen. And if you are long Euro yen, and if you are long, if you are short dollar yen, then you are long what? You tell me. Give me the answer. If you are short dollar yen and you are long euro yen, then you are you are long euro dollar. Very good. Some people are saying, what are you saying? Long euro dollar. Well, this is euro dollar here, and this is the quarterly. So I'm going to go into the monthly chart, and I'm going to talk about the ECB in a bit. So this is the monthly chart, and there was a lot of similarities from the 2000, 2001, 2002 analog here and here. We had the lows, held up the, the support. Then we broke. <clears throat> then we basically broke above this trend line. And then things started to change from here. And here's what we had. This previous resistance, like you saw here, this previous resistance, do you see? Do I need to finish the sentence or no? Yeah. So some people are saying, yes, your dollar long is not a bad idea. Dollar yen short may be wrong, and if dollar yen short is wrong, then what does that mean? Well, it could be. 
Well, I am also long going long euro euro yen, and I'll show you euro yen in a bit. But let's look at euro dollar. You see, here is here. Let me say this again: If you're long this, if you are long this, and if you are long this, then you are you are what with this? You're short. So. If this is not going to go up, this means something wrong has to happen, either this or this. Okay? Now, technically, this is a monthly chart. Respect, it created the trend line support here. <coughs> Excuse me. It created the support. Then we fell one, two, three. We respected it, and here we're respecting it. Is this um, is this a coincidence? Probably not. What about the weekly chart? Well, you can draw a trend line and you can make it fancy and so on and so forth. And you can say that there is a doji. Okay. You can say there is a nice doji here. Which is basically a big sign of uh, of reversal in uh, candlestick analysis, off, and it's followed by a big month, a, a big week, the biggest weekly gain in since the beginning of the year. Okay, and then you have this. So where do we go from here? So is there anything that Draghi is going to say on Thursday that is going to push this thing further or not? Okay, so that's that's really key, and. And here's a daily chart. Some people said that there is an inverted head and shoulder in uh, euro dollar. I don't believe there is. Uh, an inverted head and shoulder is bullish. There is sort of a right shoulder, but there's no left shoulder. If you want to basically change the rule and, and go to the two hour chart just for you to try to force it in, but you don't want to do that. Uh, still, maybe, maybe there is. If you believe this is the right shoulder, this is just this is just a wick or just a shadow in one candle. It's, but if you if you believe this is it, you try to formulate it from a from from a, from a neckline. Then you're saying 115, and then basically you're saying what 117, 200 points plus 117 it was 119. It gives you 119. Um, so when you're trying to see the, the the signs you're trying to look for the signs that the market's trying to tell you there's multiple cases of support here in euro dollar okay and i am still bullish euro dollar i am still your bullish euro dollar and i think the bullishness we're going to get it tomorrow from draghi and not from and not from uh the federal reserve i think the federal reserve is going to get a lot of volatility the market is going to go up and down and so on and so forth but the mark but uh, eventually it's going to come from the ecb uh, if we look at euro yen you can say this is a you know a, a cup and handle formation it's in it's complete uh but look at the weekly chart here Uh, very similar to dollar yen. Okay, and um, if you look at the monthly chart, it's raising some raising some eyebrows. This is the monthly chart. Okay. And um, so this is something interesting. And if you if this were a Head and shoulder. This is the head. This is the left shoulder. This is not even going towards the right shoulder. So this is really holding on. Okay. So what am I saying? If well, I, if since I am, I am short dollar yen. Instead of going outright long euro dollar. Instead of going outright long euro dollar. Some people say, no, no, there's the ECB and there's the Fed. The last pair you want to trade is the euro dollar because you're really uh, directly, because you're vulnerable to, to, to a lot of the volatility and so on and so forth. So instead of going long euro dollar, you can go long euro yen and uh, short dollar yen. 
okay? Uh, it's an indirect way of going uh, long euro dollar. It's a defensive way. Uh, the problem is, instead of dealing with one pair, you're dealing with two pairs. You're dealing with two problems, uh, and uh, and that could be a potential problem. But obviously, you know, if you want to reduce, and this is important, if if you want to reduce your uh, your riskiness, it's not really in the choice of pairs, but in the choice of the of the size of the the size of the trade, size of the amount, uh, and your leverage, and so on and so forth. And in here, the so what do you expect from the ECB? We expect upward revisions in the CPI. So this is going to be so. Again, let's talk about the timing. The interest rate uh, announcement announcement from the ECB is going to come out at 12:45 p.m. on Thursday. London time. That is 7.45 a.m. New York time. So 7.45 a.m. New York, 12.45 p.m. Um, London time, uh, plus 7. That's 5.45 p.m. 5.45 p.m. Singapore is the announcement on interest rates. And the announcement on interest rates is expected to remain unchanged because they're not expected to change interest rates. But here's a tip for you. Here's a tip for you. Usually, usually there's a small chance. Uh, well, usually not a small chance. Usually, when the announcement of interest rates comes up unchanged, even though it is expected to be unchanged, we will see a slight knee-jerk reaction lower in the euro. So the euro comes down. But the biggest event is on. Uh, is uh, 45 minutes later, which is 1.30 p.m. L uh, London time, which is the press conference of uh, Draghi. 1.30 p.m. Thursday London time, that is 8.30 p.m. Singapore time, or 4.30 p.m. Dubai time. And what are we expected? So there is going to be the revisions of the Federal Reserve, of the ECB. And the ECB is going to explain that euro weakness, the recent euro weakness and rising oil prices have justified their vigilance on inflation. So they're going to raise their inflation. And if you recall, the inflation numbers went to 1.9 and near 2% for the eurozone and for Germany. So inflation is pushing higher. You can say, oh, yes, but that's because of a weak euro and rising oil. That doesn't matter. It, it happened. And the ECB is slightly more vigilant on inflation and less tolerable uh, to, um, uh, less tolerant of inflation rising inflation than the, than the fed the ecb is also expected to emphasize and and again this may be too much word and useless language and text for those who are trading charts and technicals but these are the kind of things that end up moving the market whenever they are triggered as a bullet or as a sentence by draghi during that conference Okay, so this is the kind of thing. Uh, emphasizing that the eurozone is in an, ex in an in expansion. Right now, the eurozone is in an expansion, is not in a recovery. It's a big difference. And the market pays attention to this. Uh, now, the main reason why the euro went up in the last few uh, few days, few weeks, is because there were some uh, comments by Pryat, who is the chief economist, who basically said that the June meeting is finally going to be used to have a discussion and to clarify to the public and to the reporters what are we going to do with the QE. Okay, so they're going to clarify the time path to ending the monthly purchases of 30 billion. If you remember, they started with 60 billion, then they cut them to 30 billion. And now they have every month they buy 30 billion worth of assets, corporate bonds, government bonds, and so on. The question is, the program is expected to end in, <clears throat> in December. But the question is, um, is it going to be ending uh, in, a, you know, uh, in a drastic way? Uh, sorry, in December. The program is expected to end in December, in December of this year. What does that mean? Are they going to use, are they going to tell us tomorrow or Thursday that if everything goes well, they're going to communicate communicate um, the schedule in September meeting? Or are they going to say, or if everything goes well, they're going to come in September and they're going to 
reduce QE from 30 to 15 billion or 10 billion. And then they're going to do 10 billion for September, October, November, and then in December. And then in March, they will probably take it to zero. This is what they could do, but it will be more concrete than anything they've done before. So they're going to clarify the time path and the market is going to move sideways, left, right, and center on this. But there is another point, which is Italy. And people are going to say, why are they going to stop QE when Italy is still in trouble? Well, Italy has some uh, uncertainty, but it's not really in big trouble. Expect a lack of worry from Draghi regarding Italy. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically, this is the story. So uh, somebody said, is there an explanation in Arabic uh, to this? I've um, I've made a, I've I've done um, there is a there is a, I have a, a web I do Arabic uh, for the for the for the Ashraf Lighty subscribers and uh, and there is going to be a video that is going to come out uh, later tonight or tomorrow tomorrow actually the video is going to come out for the Ashraf Lighty subscribers okay uh, more on that here later but. Let's just talk about this now. So this is the key. Now, I, I, I talked about gold. I will talk about gold. But this is basically the euro dollar. And this is the story here with the weekly chart. So and then there is something else that I want to show is that just back to that quarterly chart. I know a lot of people don't like this quarterly chart. But if you remember, we are about to end the quarter. OK, we're about to end the quarter. So this is a quarterly chart. And here with a similarity, we well in here we had a failure in the previous quarter ending march then we tested the trend line and then we fell but we're still holding the support as suggested by the by the monthly and weekly trend line but if this is going to be similar if we are to regain this trend line we'll have to go towards 121 is it possible it's very possible it's very possible for the euro to push towards 120 119 um you know um in two weeks because the because the quarter ends okay june we are the 12th the decision of the of the ecb is the 14th one more week is the 21st one more week is the 28th and friday the 29th is the last day of the quarter so this is going to be very similar now let's just make sense here the market ladies and gentlemen the market um, yeah, somebody asked me about the BOJ, um, the BOJ decision on Friday. Nothing is expected to happen. I'm sorry. Nothing is expected to happen. Uh, it is going to be the least important of them all. I don't think they're going to uh, remove the stimulus. It's going to stay as, as it is. Um, yeah, that's all I can say. And, um, and actually on Friday, I think the yen and, and FX, they're going to be mainly reacting to what the ECB did on Friday, and they're going to react to also what Trump is going to decide regarding the final decision on import tariffs from China. So that's going to be that kind of day. Okay. Um, so there is another pair which I like, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please pay attention here. Um, now, I'm going to show you something else. And yeah. I want to talk about sterling for a bit and then I'll talk about gold. Uh, but um, there is something Tuesday and Wednesday for the UK, which is so uh, Tuesday is today. We saw the UK jobs figures and they were OK. Uh, today, the um, the highest performing currency. So yeah, it was it was a sterling, and now it is actually one of the weakest. So euro, New Zealand dollar, the Swiss franc are the highest performing currencies since the beginning of the day, since 10 p.m. London time yesterday. This is from my website. But here is something I want you to pay attention, which is this. Uh, Please pay attention to this, which is from the UK. So we had the U Tuesday jobs, but tomorrow, Wednesday, 
tomorrow, Wednesday, I know there's the Federal Reserve, but tomorrow we're expected to see at 9.30 a.m. New York time, okay? That's 4.30 p.m. Singapore time. We're going to see the UK CPI. UK CPI. And the UK CPI is expected to come out at 9.30 London time. And it is expected to show, to remain unchanged at 2.4%, which is, which is okay. Is still above the 2% level. But there is something else, ladies and gentlemen, which is more crucial, more important for the sterling, which is this. There's going to be a series of votes on Wednesday related to the um, related to Brexit. Okay. Uh, sterling traders will await the important developments in the lower house. There is the House of Lords and there's lower house in the um, in the British Parliament where a set of votes related to Brexit transition and whether Britain will end up staying in the customs union after leaving the EU in March 2019. If the, US, if the UK stays in the U, EU customs union for some years after the March 2019 for a so-called transition period, that is supposed to be called the soft Brexit. Soft Brexit, which is positive for Sterling. And the votes are expected to take place Tuesday and Wednesday. So there's going to be a lot of activity here. Now, what does that mean? Why am I talking about this? Because there is this pair here. Euro sterling. Um, and even though, even though this cup and handle has been broken, there is something that has not been broken, which is what? Which is what? Tell me. What do you see here? Uh, the, very good, awesome, awesome, very good, um, bravo, yeah, good, good job, well, at least that's what I think, I'm not saying this is the way or my way or the highway, but yeah, so there is, um, so this, even though this is just one candle, this left shoulder, it is also coinciding here with this level, but there's a left shoulder, the head, right shoulder, you come out, you come out, you come out, it is pushing higher, the neckline is here, we broke it, we come back down and we are regaining it, okay? Not the cleanest of them, but it is possible. And it is doable. And now we are holding right above, right at the 200 day moving average, okay? Um, so the UK, the numbers are improving, but there's always the risk of, 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 of Brexit. And there is a 53% chance that the, that, the, that the Bank of England is going to raise interest rates in August. But it's not going to raise rates in July. It usually changes rates in August or in around, around, the, around the November, uh, around the inflation uh, report, which is every three months, which is February, May, um, August, and November. So what we're seeing here, this is... This has been going nowhere, I know, and but it has been going nowhere. For those who like to trade the, the consolidation, this is not bad. <clears throat> but you can see that there is a sort of a gradual inverted head and shoulder here, okay? As you can see here. But this is, and I would say that if you would have to watch obviously the cpi tomorrow from the uk how this is going to expect and we do have a uh, in the trades here we have a long euro sterling uh it got stopped out the last one but now we bought around 88.10 and so, yeah so it's pushing higher so i think there's a good chance that this is one of uh, also the favorites here to go long euro sterling now but what about this? What about sterling dollar? So sterling dollar is pushing weaker again. Uh, the numbers today from the job figures in the UK were slightly disappointing as far as the average hourly, as, as, as the earnings. Okay, the earnings uh, fell from 2.6 to 2.5 as expected, slowed down. 
292.8, weaker than expected. And jobless claims fell, which is a good thing. And uh, but the ILO remained unchanged, unemployment rate. Okay, so I am I don't really have any strong views regarding uh, sterling. I don't a sterling dollar. Um, but this is just something to look at. Um, we've broken below this 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 previous horizontal base. We've entered back into the channel, uh, but really there's nothing here extraordinary that I can say. This is the sterling. Um, actually. Yeah, um, Sterling Aussie, I'll tell you which, which pairs that I'm watching. So this is Sterling Yen, the market is pushing higher, um, yields are pushing higher, so usually the Yen goes down and anything goes up against the, against, against, against the, against the Yen. But here is, yeah, but here is a pair that I talked about when I talked about the symmetrical uh, goal of inflation, which is this, which is Aussie dollar. And Aussie dollar, again, so you have left shoulder, head, right shoulder, distance between the head, 74, 75, 60, that's 130 pips, 130 plus 75, 60, that is around 76, 90, 77. So 77, just around here. Or we can see the target was reached 76.80. Some people say it was it was reached, um, but look at this, and and as long as so we've broken the neckline, we've almost hit the target. Some people say we have reached it. We're gonna come down. There is a nice rising trend line support, r higher lows, and if you look at the long term, and as long as there's no big no bad news with China, this is good for Australia. But look at this. <clears throat> multi-year trend line support is still holding 2001 holding here and holding here here it took a while but we're doing well and look at the monthly chart one two three reversal month probably a confirmation but this is going to take some time so this is also to pay attention to Okay. Okay. Um, I hope this webinar is going to be recorded. Um, I'm not sure. Yes, it is. It is going to be recording. Uh, it says stop recording. So, yeah, it is. It is being recorded. Yes. All right. Um, DXY, some people said, let's show me the DXY, the US dollar index, which is basically 57% of which is the euro dollar. Here's the monthly chart of the euro dollar. This is the monthly chart. That big horizontal brace, which we broke, we've regained it. So this is really going to be the key. And, but here's what the US dollar has to negotiate. We have this the meaning, what is the meaning of this? So 200 week moving average, it failed. It failed. It's just the same high as this, the market has memory. And this level was basically, um, this high is not insignificant. So basically this level here, very similar. It could be 38% retracement. If you believe in closing and not highs, 38% retracement. Here's the market close right below it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the 10 year yield, and this is what I want to show this, the yield in the US, um, it's usually, usually it moves up when the yen goes down. But look at these technicals here. And this is one of the, as this breaks out, it's usually easier for currencies to break higher above against the yen. Okay. And so here is something for you to consider. Okay. Um, the dollar yen, uh, the yield has been pushing for the last three, 
um, for the last three days. The inflation numbers were were okay in the U.S., but we we have to remember this word, and this is what we have to remember. This word is this the symmetrical objective and bonds, and this is what the market is paying attention. I use um, I use MT4, but this this is the one I'm using. The chart is Bloomberg Terminal. Okay, so. And here's what we're seeing. And if you look at the weekly chart in here, you basically look at this. Um, it is a nice uptrend. Um, look at the monthly chart. Now we have to see. So at the end of the day, please pay attention to this. Please pay attention. Whenever I want to know whether a data come out, whether a report, a job report that has multiple sets. So the job report in the U.S. has the unemployment rate, has the has the earnings, has has the NFP. Um, you know, the Federal Reserve decision has the dot plot, has the, has the has the rate hike, has the. If I want to know what the market really think about something and where it is really stressing, I look at the ten-year yield. Okay, and I want to see if the ten-year yield is really rising or not. So there's a big school right now. So the, the, the bond market has been basically rising in prices and falling in yields for the last 30 years. But things have been improving, and a lot of smart people are saying that <clears throat> that's it. The bond market rally is over, meaning meaning um, the rally in, uh, in prices or the decline in yields is over, and the market is going to break out. I personally think I'm still in the school that we're not going to go above 3.5 or 3.3%, and eventually we're going to go back down towards 2% or 1%. Okay, and I don't think there's going to be a big problem about inflation. And I think as the Federal Reserve is going to raise rates and emerging markets are raising rates, and uh, the rest of the world is normalizing, I think that they might not be handled very well by the world uh, economy. So that's one thing. But here's what I want you to pay attention to, which is basically, as this happens, and again, the the same high that we had here in 2014, we are testing it here. Okay, we can talk about yield spreads and and yield curves in other webinars. Um, but let's talk about this gold. So gold. This is the monthly chart, and these cycles, every December there's a low, and then we push higher. It's Federal Reserve December is usually. Okay, there's a low, push higher. There's a cycle here in December. Cycle, push higher, push higher, push higher. And the same thing. The trend line or the inverted head and shoulder is still being respected. If we do fall below 1290 or 1280, I'm not worried. I'm only worried if we do break below 1260. But let's go into the weekly chart. And again, any argument in favoring of rising inflate, uh, rising gold is not just inflation is going to run away. It's just that the Fed is going to have to take it easy. This is the weekly chart. This is the 55 moving average. This is the 55. And this is the 100 week moving average. Okay. Yes, we've fallen below this trend line, but it's still higher lows. Low, higher low, higher low, higher low. <clears throat> and now the daily chart. What has happened here? Yes, we made a lot of noise falling. But then what happened here? The market is not in a hurry to want to do anything. Some people say, oh, the fact that we's not, we're not pushing back higher is, is bearish. Well, the fact that we are actually hugging the support and we're not falling below the support repetitively is not negative. It's actually bullish. All right, so the sign that something is up does not necessarily mean that when it's breaking out, it just means that it's its ability to test the support and to hold off the support, okay? So we'll have to see tomorrow if there's any reactionary uh, event risk that would really drive your uh, gold, but this is just something to pay attention. And there is something that I like to pay attention, which is basically the gold bugs, which is... Um, And this is and this is gold divided by the miners. Okay. And here, this is gold divided by the miners, by the gold box. And as this ratio goes down, what happens to gold? Gold 
it actually goes up okay so as this goes down gold goes up so what i'm seeing as long as this does not go up or continues to go in a base or struggles to push higher then this is good sign for me to keep on staying with gold the problem is probably 90 percent of the people that you pay attention now they like gold they, they, they prefer gold but the timing is really a bit worrying so so with the ecb once again uh again this is what we expect so there's you have to pay attention if there's going to be any upward revisions in their forecast i don't think they're going to have any strong upward revisions in gdp growth it's going to be in inflation um they're going to give you the path towards qe ending qe let's see how clear that's going to be and there's a and, and italy they're going to say well we're not really worried uh, about italy things are improving and so on and so forth and they're not going to select anybody who is anti-euro and there's number four there's a fourth thing which is basically uh is the extent to which Draghi is going to say, we had a long discussion, we are disagreeing, we're not disagreeing, it was unanimous, all of these things are key. Before I finish, I just want to talk about the Canadian dollar. I don't know how many people trade the Canadian dollar, but um, there is, I have been short in the Canadian dollar and I've been hurting and I've been struggling. So I've been short the Canadian dollar. This is the weekly chart. This is what it's been doing. Okay, and this is the monthly chart. This is the monthly chart. Some people say that this is a, you know, a downward triangle. Some people say, no, it's not. This is a horizontal base. What is this? Is this, a, is this a declining, an ascending or descending triangle? You tell me, what is it? What is it? What does the textbook of economics, of uh, technicals tell you? Okay, so this is an, an ascending, an ascending. You're saying that this is an ascending triangle. This means that it is a rising triangle, right? Shall we look what does an ascending triangle mean? If some of you are not answering. Okay, so here is an ascending triangle. What is this? This is ascending. Ascending looks like this. Okay. This is a descending triangle, not an ascending triangle. Okay. High, lower highs. Lower highs. Okay, so at least the theory or the textbook theory backs me up, my short dollar cat. Um, as far as the stochastics, it's debatable. Here's the weekly chart, and here is another textbook for head and shoulder. So we were short in here. So let me just show you a little story here. Um, so this was a textbook head and shoulder. Okay. Left shoulder, top right shoulder, neckline. The difference, 131.22, 128.25. The difference between 131.30, well, 131.20, 128.20 is 300 points. 300 points minus 28. 28.20 is 25. So we got here. Then we went back up. We went back up, left shoulder, and guess what? Look at this left shoulder. Did it break or not? Any guy who, who, who applies this to the letter is going to say, yes, it broke. It didn't break. This is the high. This is the close. What, and then you have to say, what is the market really trying to do? What is the, is, is the market trying to scream at you, trying to send you a signal? What is that signal? 
while we're trying to break. The other person is going to say, no, it's trying to break, but there is a reason why it doesn't break. Here, this could be a break. This is a break. Yes, we've broken, but we came back. Now we've broken mouth. So you may say we have broken. You may say we are going to regain the high. I still think there's a chance that we're not going to regain the high. Uh, there is something else that you need to pay attention, which is the Canadian economy is improving. The only reason, the main reason, the only reason that the Canadian dollar is falling, meaning the US dollar is rising against Canadian, is the uncertainty with NAFTA and with the with the verbal trade fight between between the two friends, Canada and the US. And the US said, we're, we're going to, I don't care about friendship, I don't care about this, you've been issuing uh, tariffs on us, we're going to issue tariffs on you. And this happens and this hurts Canada. But the fundamentals of Canada, ladies and gentlemen, the fundamentals of Canada are improving and the jobs are improving. And there is a good chance if the Federal Reserve is going to raise rates, is going to raise rates, the Canadians, they're not going to just sit and watch. They will have to, they will have to raise rates too. Okay. And and I'm going to show you something here is that if you look at the Canadian interest rates versus the US, okay, red is Canada interest rates, blue is the Fed funds interest rates in the US. And this is US dollar versus Canada, okay? The interesting thing here is that let's look at the red. And when the Canada raised rates, they raised them. They raised them in July 2017, and they raised them in January 2018. But here, they raised them in July 2010. Okay. The the Canada Canada likes to raise interest rates in July because in June it does not have meetings. And it waits until the Fed does what it does. And if the Fed does too, something with interest rates too low, too high, it tries to keep the margin. So there's a tendency, what you call a tendency, I'm not saying every time the Bank of Canada raises interest rates in July. Okay? And this is the margin. And basically, yeah, and this is oil. And as long as oil is going to push higher, it's going to justify. And that's why I'm going to show you this. So they're going to show you the probability of which Canada is going to raise interest rates in July. And basically, for July, is 73%, 73% chance that the Bank of Canada is going to raise interest rates. Okay? And it's been hovering around 73 and 80. <clears throat> so, I, I talked about yields. I hope that was clear discussion. With indices, um, I've shorted indices until I got stopped out and until I hated doing it, so I'm not doing it much of it. If there is anything that is worth the while here is that maybe there is a possibility if the euro is going to rise and we're going to have a slightly hawkish conference from Draghi, then maybe we could look for any potential decline for the DAX. And here is what we're doing. So if we get rid of this, And no, it's not a head and shoulder, but it has the same behavior and formation, inability to regain this high. This is interesting. So if you want to short stocks, and this is, this is something to look at, okay? There's a lot to talk about here today, but we just have one hour. Uh, it is, let's just speak for 10 more minutes or five more minutes. Actually, I need to take some of your questions, please, if you have any questions. Uh, Let's look at the stochastics and the indicators. Yeah, this is slightly positive, but here's what the market's trying to do. Let's look at the Dow. The Dow is really pushing higher. I mean, this, these, these formations are positive, okay? And if the same behavior between stocks and between FX and the US dollar is going to continue, that means that 
if we, we, we could see the, the US dollar weakening, if indices are going to push higher, and it would be the rationale. If you're going to tie it, you're going to say that, well, basically, if the Federal Reserve is not going to be hurried to raise interest rates, then, 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 then indices are going to like it, and, and the dollar is not going to gain by any new proactive uh, uh, campaign to raise interest rates. The daily chart is here. We have broken here. But you can say we're broken here, but we're testing the lows. So we are testing these. There was one metric that I had, which is basically the weekly chart on the VIX, which is basically the fear index. And this VIX basically telling you as this goes down, more, as this goes up, as the VIX goes up, the market goes down. Uh, one indicator I had, which is the 55 week moving average on the VIX, it was holding, it was holding, and finally we're breaking below it. So, so as long as we held, at it the market did not really rise that much so for me um, let's look at the dax and the dax oh, sorry the s p it does show that it probably want to retest this level but i think probably around 2800 is still a big resistance but the dax does suggest something any questions so far well not so far but for now because we're going to close this in a bit okay um, just to, just to give you an idea about the about the premium insights here basically uh, we've had a tough uh, three weeks a uh, few trades got stopped out some of them got stopped out uh, very very close so let me just show you what I'm talking about um, so for instance so Canadian yen yes that's another thing I wanted to talk to you about we shorted Canadian yen at 8330 um, again please if you so dollar cad if you are short dollar cad if you are short dollar cad and again for those of you who think that this is going to break out what about this idea look there's a big candle high wick closing here high wick closing here could this month be the same so if you are short dollar cad and if you are short if you are short canadian yen then you are what are you with dollar yen what are you okay if you are short canadian versus the yen and you are short us versus cad then you are short dollar yen right yes i use 55 200 and 100 yeah the green is always 100 purple is 55 the yellow is 200 now when I was long dollar CAD, please pay attention to this. When I was long, when I was short, sorry, when I was short dollar CAD, I issued a short here just to hedge, but also I'll tell you why. But I also, because there was some, I expect the market is going to go up and I expected that this issue with NAFTA is going to continue. So I shorted dollar CAD and look at the problem. I shorted it 29th of May, 83.30, at 83.30, had a stop at 83.6, 85.30, 85.60. They had to stop at 85.30. The market went to 85.47, and then it came down. It stopped me out, and it came down. Is this still viable? It's not a bad idea. So basically, this is... Do you see what I'm seeing or no? Do you see what I'm seeing? Do you see what I'm seeing? So most... Yen pairs are showing this formation quasi, quasi head and shoulder. So if this is really going to be the right shoulder, this is just a interruption. This could really come back down, head 87, 84, 84 minus 3, 81. What is 81? The meaning of 81 is that this used to be an inverted head and shoulder, which we had for our clients here, Canadian Yen. Uh, we had a while ago when we shorted and we made money for it but now here is a hair and shoulder so this is a head and shoulder inverted head and shoulder shoulder head shoulder the market respecting this and the theory is that if you take the head and shoulder here this one the regular head and shoulder the goal would be 80 or 81 which is right respecting the shoulder of the inverted head and shoulder Okay, so this is just one thing of looking at it. So it's just a nice way to hedge this, and it is also in line with the short dollar yen. If you don't want to short dollar yen outright, you can basically go short Canadian yen and long and 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 short USD CAD. 
okay? It's called defensive trading, or it's called basically uh, uh, using, using the crosses. United States, uh, they say crosses because it doesn't involve US dollar, okay? And so, you know, some people said, what is it? التوصيات صحة التوصيات يعتمد على على أي يعني على على خيارك لل للزوج. Your extent to which the success of the currency pairs of the of the the extent of of the success of these currents of these premium inside depends really on on which pairs you use. But some of them are 50%, some of them are 65%, some of them are 40% accuracy, meaning hit rate. Uh, in the Dow, for instance, if you've taken the Dow, we've had very bad luck with the, with the Dow. Uh, let me show you Euro Dollar, for instance. Let me give you an example. Euro Dollar, the last trade. So this was 23rd of May. We've issued a long at 116.20. Okay. So we've issued a long, which was basically on the day of the minutes, 23rd of May. <clears throat> 1620 23rd of May okay so we basically 23rd of May here and we put a stop at 11530 the market dropped where did it go 11510 so 20 pips below the stop it hit it and then it went back up and now the market is 117.80. So this was basically a either an appropriate wrong uh, uh, um, wrong pl stop placement, and I tell the, actually the subscribers do not hesitate to put it lower than what I put it. You know, but again, this is up to you guys. So again. And what we have, we have this deal, is that basically um, the premium insights uh, for one month, basically they are for $110, three months, $295. Uh, there is the premium videos, and, and in English. Uh, this is the Arabic section, okay? And field uh, video at Arabia. And this is, it goes in the SMS, then you click on it and then you get the actual service has been around since 2011 and we have a special the premium trades you usually get a one week free but if you have an account or a real account a trading account with tickmill then you get one month free if you sign up with tickmill today and tickmill is a very well known uh, uh, trading platform and it also caters for institutional uh, traders and um, and basically all you need to do you can send me an email and say i have opened an account i have an open i have an account with tickmill please send me uh, one month free and you either send it to me and this is a telegram this is not the premium inside this is the blue arabi on telegram and you either send an email to support and say hey i have an account with you guys can you give me one month free and then i get the email forwarded and we can support or you can send it to me so i hope this was helpful um, it's a really swing trade, Oscar, swing trade. So basically a trade can take anywhere between, you know, uh, six days to, 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 to two weeks to three weeks. It is really a swing trading. Uh, but when I, when I give basically the, when I tell people, well, the, I'm going for 250 pips, you, you don't have to wait until 250 pips. You can get out after 30 pips and get, and get back in 40 pips and get back in. Okay. So it's basically the story. So I hope this was helpful. And I hope this um, uh, the lot a lot a lot to look and to take in from the Federal Reserve decision. Uh, the symmetrical aspect is very important. Again, I will be tweeting. Uh, so I am in LID here. Okay. So if you look at this. So this is my Twitter LID, and um, and basically I will be saying something like Fed raises rates. Uh, three rate hikes expected and so on and so forth and just to recapitulate just to recapitulate tomorrow is wednesday wednesday tomorrow we have the cpi from the uk at 9 30 a.m okay or 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 or, or uh, cyprus 11 30 a.m cyprus or saudi or, or half past noon uh dubai Use CPI from the UK is important. The Federal Reserve decision announcement is at 7 p.m. London time. 
seven thirty is the decision is the is the press conference and then Thursday the big day the ECB. Okay. Oh, there's also Australian unemployment data. I don't know how many of you are going to be awake. <clears throat> That's on Thursday at two thirty a.m. London time. Two thirty meaning five thirty. Uh, it's going to be probably. I don't think Eid is going to be on Thursday. The Eid al Adha uh, probably is going to be on Friday, but Allah alam. So the, basically, this is uh, what I'm talking about. Then there's the World Cup on Thursday, but interestingly, the opening match is between Saudi Arabia and 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 and, and Russia in Russia. But uh, Putin and Mohammed bin Salman are definitely going to meet together to talk about oil and oil supply because just ahead, one week ahead of the big OPEC meeting. Okay, and uh, this is basically that. Naam. And uh, the gentleman here tells me that the Eid is Yom Jum'ah. في ناس بيقولوا إنه بالسعودية ما بيحبوا لما العيد بطلع بطلع يوم الجمعة. So there's a very good chance that there's the Eid is going to be on Friday. Uh, but yeah, we will have to see. The Eid is basically it's the end of the Ramadan. Uh, it's a big feast in the United uh, in, in in the Arab world and and in the Muslim world. So I hope this was. Uh, uh, educational for you guys. If there's any questions, again, you can contact me either here or you can contact Tikmil. Um, I've done events with Tikmil in Dubai uh, and in Abu Dhabi uh, last uh, two months ago, and it was uh, it was exciting. I was happy to strike a relationship with the company. It's pretty solid. It's... Thank you very much, and uh, we will. Uh, if there's anything, again, stay tuned for the next 48 hours. They're going to be very busy. All the best, and thank you.